and hello and here we are back in my garage for part three of my beginner's guide to motorcycle electrics and in this video we're going to cover the charging system of a motorbike and so the charging system of a typical modern motorcycle consists of three elements first of all you have the alternator which is driven by the engine and generates the electricity needed for the bike the second component is what's called the rectifier or sometimes the rectifier stroke regulator and the third component is the battery of course because that's what stores that electrical energy to be used on the bike as you ride along and so once again with no expense spent I've drawn up a quick diagram of the charging system on a typical motorbike so here we've got the alternator here we've got the rectifier which is finned to keep it cool and here we have the battery which stores the electric power generated by by the alternator now I will add that some really old bikes don't use an alternator they use what's called a generator but the function is exactly the same it's just that alternators tend to be lighter smaller and more efficient so if you've got a bike made in the last 40 or 50 years the chances are it's using an alternator not a generator and so an alternator consists of two parts it consists of a rotor and a stator and I remember the differences because rotors rotate and stators are stationary I'm not sure that's why it's called that but that's how I remember it so a rotor is something that normally bolts to the end of the crankshaft so as the crankshaft spins the rotor spins and the faster the engine revs the faster the rotor spins and the rotor is kind of like a dished steel bowl and on the inside of that bowl are magnets which are glued to the inside so as it spins around the magnets spin around too whereas the stator doesn't move and it's bolted often to the inside of the engine cover and the stator consists of usually three coils of wire that's wound round quite closely and covered in resin and those tightly bound coils of wire generate electricity when the magnet moves around them that's sort of basic electrical theory I am sure there are lots and lots of great YouTube videos which show you how that works and why it works but we won't cover that here all you need to know is the alternator consists of two parts stator and rotor so out of the engine we usually find two or sometimes three wires which lead from those tightly bound coils of wire and those three wires or sometimes two wires go from the alternator to the rectifier and so let's update my simple diagram here we have got three wires coming out of the alternator into the rectifier there we go and they're coming from these three sets of wire coils inside here they're spread around the outside of this circle now chances are these three wires which come out of the alternator into the rectifier are the same color in my case on the Kawasaki these are yellow so you can't really tell them apart you don't know which one's which and that's fine because it doesn't matter they all serve the same purpose and they can go into any particular you know connection on the rectifier that needs a yellow wire if you like so what happens is the power is generated by this alternator and that electric power is then passed to the rectifier so the business of the rectifier is to convert this electric power from the alternator into a state that the battery can take and will charge the battery up so we have another wire here which goes from the rectifier into the positive terminal of the battery which then charges up the battery and so the alternator creates what's called alternating current or AC current which the battery can't use and most of your in fact I think all of your electric components on the bike don't use AC current no they need what's called DC current or direct current therefore the rectifier rectifies this AC current into DC current so it converts AC power into DC power which you can then pass on to the battery and charge it up 
And so the vast majority of modern motorcycles have three coils built into the alternator so they have three wires going to the rectifier. But if you've got a small motorcycle, a little 125 or 50cc moped or something really old, you might find there's only two wires or sometimes even one wire because it's only got one coil or two coils inside the alternator. But don't worry about it because it still works. And so the alternator creates AC current the rectifier converts it into, or rectifies it, into DC current, which the battery can use to store that electric power. But the rectifier is actually incorrectly named. It's actually a rectifier stroke regulator. On really old bikes, those two functions are done by two separate little electric boxes. But on the vast majority of bikes made in the last 40 years, that job is done by one box, which is the rectifier stroke regulator. So what does a regulator do? Well, it limits the amount of electric power going into the battery because the alternator creates electricity from the spinning of the engine. And the faster the engine spins or revs, the more electric power the alternator can generate and does generate. And it can spin so fast that it can generate maybe 15 or 16 volts, which is too much for the battery to take. If it kept on getting 15 volts rather than say 13 or 14 volts it could boil over get too hot and ruin the battery which you don't want so one job of the rectifier stroke regulator is to limit or regulate the amount of electric power going into the battery and usually it limits it to around about 14.5 or 15 volts max if it gets too much power of course it's got to do something with that power and it generally dumps it as heat and that's why the rectifier regulator is finned because it gets quite hot in use. If you're constantly revving your engine on a hot day, this thing can get quite hot itself. And that's why on a bike, you'll usually find it positioned perhaps underneath the seat or underneath a side panel where hopefully it can get a lot of fresh air, a lot of cool air to keep it nice and cool. And so now I've added a few more wires to my charging system diagram. I've added a wire going from the positive terminal of the battery back into the rectifier. And that wire is to tell the rectifier when the battery is fully charged. When it is, the rectifier can stop feeding even more charge into the battery and overcharging it. I've also added a wire from the rectifier to the earth, because usually the rectifier stroke regulator needs to be earthed, so that's fine. And finally, I've added this wire here, which is going to the dashboard of your bike, the clocks, because there are some bikes where you get some kind of indication, some sort of light telling you when the rectifier, when the whole charging system is working OK or not working OK. That's getting rarer these days, though. Although I do recall having a 70s Ducati, it had a dash light and the dash light was on all the time to tell you all was well with the charging system. It was only when the light went out did you realise that something was wrong. And that used to be really frustrating because that light was in your eyesight all the time. But that's getting quite rare these days and you don't always have this additional, this additional wire. Right, so that's all the theory of the charging system. So now let's move on to the practice. And so here we have a bike for which I'm building its wiring harness at the moment. And here we have its rectifier bolted behind a side panel. As you can see, it's got a multi-pin plug here to take the power in and out. It's got three yellow wires. And those three wires are the wires that come from the alternator when the engine's fitted. It's also got a black wire and a red wire. I happen to know, because I've read the instructions, that the red wire is power to the battery. And the black wire, I think, is going um, from the battery back to back to the rectifier so pretty simple and so here we have the engine of my old Kawasaki Z and behind this cover here which is called the alternator cover is guess what the alternator now I don't have an alternator to hand to show you but I can show you some photographs so if we took this off I'll show you what it looks like now and now I'll show you a photograph of the electrical coils which are bolted to the inside of this cover and sure enough, at the base of this alternator cover, we've got three yellow wires that are coming out 
of the alternator which go to the rectifier onwards to the battery. Now one problem you can get with alternators is that the wires do have to come out of the engine and that's a point where you can get oil leaks because the seal, the little rubber seal that keeps the oil inside the engine where the wires pop out can get old, get aged, get cracked, can shrink and cause an oil leak. So if you do get an oil leak in this area here it could well be because that little seal has, uh, has got too old and has failed. So to replace that seal, if you can replace them, you have to take this cover off and usually replace it from the inside. So that's something to be aware of. While here at the back of my garage, my Guzzi here has its alternator on the end of the crankshaft which is down here at the front of the engine because of course the crankshaft is in line with the bike. So I'll show you a photograph now of what that alternator looks like once I've taken the cover off. Oh and by the way the cover is not standard, it's, uh, we made that for the bike out of billet aluminium but that's a, a different story. Now in this case that alternator only has two wires coming out of the alternator going to its rectifier and that's because it's probably slightly older design not quite as efficient and it only has you know two sets of coils to generate power i mean italian bikes of this age are renowned for having slightly dodgy electrics but this seems to work okay at least for the time being so whatever bike you've got usually usually the alternator is bolted to the end of the crankshaft of your engine. On a few more modern bikes, as I've already mentioned, the alternator could be perhaps mounted behind the cylinders and driven from the crankshaft via a chain and cog or some kind of gears, and they do that to try and reduce the width of the engine in your bike. And so now we know what each of these components do and where you can find them on your bike. Next thing to talk about is what goes wrong with those components and actually there is quite a lot of things that can go wrong. The alternator can fail and no longer produce electricity or not enough electricity which means your battery then discharges over time and you're stuck, you can't start your bike. The reasons why the alternator fails are usually because either the magnets which are attached to the road to which it's spinning around come loose and can fall off um, and cause all kinds of damage. That's not good. But more often it's the coils themselves which break down. They're painted or coated in this kind of resin to insulate them and over the years that resin can crack and cause shorts within the system which stops it from generating the correct amount of electric power for your bike. In that case you can't really repair them too easily so the best course of action is just to replace them and away you go. The next problem of course is with the rectifier stroke regulator that can fail too. It can get too hot at times and it can cause the rectifier to fail. They usually solid state now inside that little box it's all solid state electronics and if they get too hot they can fail. And you can find out if the problem is with the alternator or the rectifier by using a multimeter which we haven't discussed yet but a multimeter will tell you how much power is being generated by the alternator when it's, the engine's running or it can also tell you how much power is being generated or converted from the rectifier into the, into the um, battery. Of course this kind of power here is AC, alternating current and this electric power here is DC, so that's something you need to remember when you're checking things with your multimeter, which we've not covered yet because that's a whole different, different story. So yeah, and of course, as usual, another set of problems is caused because the wires can fail. You know, you can get a worn wire, the plastic covering could be worn off, which causes a short on your bike, or these connections can fail and break and cause you a problem. And the first thing you know about it is when your bike doesn't start because the battery's not being charged adequately to keep it topped up to enable you to start your bike and run your bike. And so there's a quick overview of my beginner's guide to the charging system of your motorbike. And if you've got any questions that I've not covered, please put them in the comments below and I'll try and answer them as best I can. So that's the this video finished now and I think in the next video I might cover, let's see, what can we talk about next? Perhaps the, um, 
ignition system of a motorbike. I think that might be next. That'll be part four. So until then, thanks for watching and cheers.